रोड सेफ्टी वर्ल्ड सीरीज सीजन टू को पावर बाय पेटीएम से यूपीआई एंड फेबले न्यूज खेल जा डिजिटल स्पॉन्सर म्यूचुअल फंड सही है जो आज दे सर्टेनली डोंट डिसीव यू बट देयर इज नो रेन एंड देयर इज नो कवर्स ऑन द सरफेस सो बिफोर इट डज अराइव लेट्स गेट दिस टॉस अंडरवे विद मी हियर आउट इन द मिडल आई हैव गॉट मिस्टर अहमद शुक्ला आवर रोड सेफ्टी एंबेसडर मिस्टर विश्वनाथ आवर मैच रेफरी कर्क एडवर्ड्स द कैप्टन ऑफ द वेस्ट इंडीज लेजेंड्स एंड शेन वाटसन इज द कैप्टन ऑफ द ऑस्ट्रेलियन लेजेंड्स शेन यू गॉट द कॉइन रोड इज द कॉल Kirk, you've won it. Uh, we're going to have a bat first. You're going to have a bat first. What's the reason behind that? Oh, it looks a good pitch, so we're going to have a crack on it and see what's up. Well, that's it's, it's a little surprising. I mean, we're seeing in T20 around the world now that most sides like to like to chase. That's the case sometimes, but tonight we're going to have a bat. This evening we're going to have a bat first. What have you guys been up to over the last couple of days? Because it's been a while since you've played. Uh, sitting around in Johnny Hotel, you know, some of the guys had a few. blocks in the gym you know around the pool but it's a uh, nice to connect with some guys that you haven't seen in a while that you played cricket with years ago so it's a it was a great time to get started off the field some notable emissions tonight from your side i uh, just had one or two changes we had uh, Dave Mohammed coming back in for Nevin Shore and we have Jerome Taylor you know he's in the side uh, skipper's out so i'm going to fill in for him tonight Brian Lara not not playing tonight uh, it, i hope it's not an injury Uh, he has a little bit of a niggle but you know hopefully we'll see him next game. Fantastic. All the best for tonight. Thank Thanks you very much. Thank you. All the best mate. <laughs> Shane what what were you going to do first? Uh, we were going to bowl first so worked out well. You happy about that? Now what about that performance in the last match from from Hads there with a bat? Yeah, I know it's brilliant, wasn't he? Um got us home in a clutch uh clutch moment of the game. It was great to be able to see him just wind back the clock and played a lot of beautiful shots. And yourself, you hit the ball quite sweet. Yeah, it's nice to get a few out of the middle. Uh, it would have been nice to get a few more, but um, just to be able to be out in the middle and um, get a couple out of the middle um, brings back good memories. Yeah, I'm sure it does. <laughs> a little bit frustrating, obviously, not having played for the, lo- for the last couple of days. What have you guys been up to in this beautiful area? Well, it's been pretty chilled, unfortunately. Yeah, it's been, it's been raining here, so it's more so been indoors that we've been doing. But we've fat plan, uh, found plenty of ways to be able to keep ourselves entertained. Um, but it's just really nice that the sun's out, yeah. um, the covers are off, and we can get some cricket on. I won't ask you about your 11, but I'll yeah. ask you about some notable emissions. Yeah. Um, so, um, unfortunately, Brett Lee's missing for this game. He's just got a um, cork thigh, which he's recovering from. Um, Cameron White's missing out for this game. John Hastings and also George Hall and Smith won't be playing this game either. All right. Well, all the best for tonight. Thanks, Tachi. Right, so the news from the middle is that Australia, they've won the toss. Excuse me. The West Indies have won the toss and they're going to have a bat first. Yeah, a number of changes for both sides. And we expect that given the fact that the, it is a, a legends to a real admission is Brett Lee that uh, for the Australian side, the, they've got a decent lineup. Welcome Brad Hogg. Have we already done the toss? Thanks, Liz. Yeah. That's all right. I thought I was meant to uh, do that after the, uh, the, the uh, after the toss. But anyway, no drama. The teams, just a little bit of a uh, rigmarole there. Been out there talking to the Australians. They are really keen to get out there on this wet surface and bowl first and get into the West Indies. But the West Indies are very comfortable as well. Uh, they are on the top of the table or up there in the top three. And. Yeah, we've had certainly a lot of rain out there and I know Hoggy you were out there a little bit earlier. Is the pitch uh, report? Well, today we won't need the covers and the car won't need to come out and get the windscreen wipers on because hopefully it won't rain and we get a full day's play of cricket in. Looking at this pitch on a good length, it's going to suit the spinners. There's just a little bit of movement uh, on the surface here where there's a few cracks and there's a plates that are moving there. So that's going to create a bit of up and down bounce and if you bowl a little slower you should get some grip. But stumps to stump up here on a good length for the fast bowlers as well. We've got the same issues there's some part of the pitch that's really holding up but other parts of the pitch where there's just a little bit of movement in those little cracks if we can come up here with a camera and get closer uh, we can really see that movement there more so just there on that good length there so to me it's going to be tough for the batters tonight but it's great that the old guys have got out and got a game underway for us yeah, it's The curator has done really well here to try and get this pitch up and running for this particular fixture. It's been tough with the weather around. Covers are coming on and off. Just 
being able to get that consistency with the roller and that moisture coming through with the covers with the humidity as well has really troubled the curators. So they've done a good job to get this wicket up, Lisa. Yeah, it's great. It's great that we've actually got some cricket and the umpires uh, who we're staying with. Umesh Dubey and Melin Patak. We've all been sitting there hoping that we'd get a game on. The players as well. There's only so much sitting in a hotel room you can do. No opportunity for, the, for these guys to train either. So they're just going to have to be able to switch on straight away. The Australians, we heard from Shane Watson, was quite comfortable to bowl first. And given the amount of clouds out there, we don't know if rain will come. But obviously, we know it's always better to chase in these type of conditions. For West Indies, without Brian Lara, the big name, that doesn't matter. They've got wonderful strikers, wonderful players. Dwayne Smith has been outstanding for them already, already two half centuries. Perkins, the keeper, has played a bit for the West Indies. Dominant opening batter in first class cricket back home in the Caribbean. And with all the talent they had in the West Indies, it was very difficult for him to get those extra opportunities. Dwayne Smith, uh, 39, played a lot of T20 cricket in different leagues all around the world. One of the most sought after T20 players, could bowl a bit, uh, do the damage with the bat, but also dynamite in the field one of the quickest movers in the field that we've ever seen Dwayne Smith and Dirk Nannis the skier we heard an interview with him with Aaron Holland earlier on in the tournament yeah, he loves going back to Japan and skiing he's competed in that particular sport as well it's one of those things you're trying to make that choice of what sport you actually want to do and that probably just held him back a little bit with the cricket as well, just getting that body right to play the longer form of the game because first-class cricket back home, he was a very difficult customer to, to face in the red ball game. He made his mark in the T20 game. Well, the crowd that has come in, they've wanted to see some cricket and they finally get to the Australian legends, West Indies legends, Two sides that have always had good competition against each other. And we're away. And not a bad start from the West Indies. Smith just picks up where he left off. Been playing a bit of club cricket back home in the Caribbean. Putting back into the grassroots game. And that preparation is why he's able to do that from ball one. Nannis has actually been one of the standout for the Australian bowlers. And he gets that little shape into the right-handers and was able to do that that time. Just got a feel for the fast bowlers here. They are making a big effort to get this game underway today and we're going to try and get the game on this evening as well. Double header here, but just the run-ups for the fast bowlers is quite difficult. Just getting that footing, feeling comfortable as you get to the crease. So don't expect a little sharpness in ball speed today. Nicely hammered down the ground. Doesn't matter how much sawdust is there, it doesn't slow the pace of the ball. Big over so far. This is what he's renowned for back in the Caribbean. Powerful strokes straight down the ground against the new ball. The weather has been an issue here, but so far, so good. 26 degrees, humidity high, 81%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little bit fuller. Trying to go almost for that Yorker link. Brad Haddon out in the field. Normally see him with the gloves. Ben Dunks taking the gloves today. Uh, squatting behind the stumps is just probably a little too much for the keepers, and it's lucky that they've got two keepers here so they can rotate and help each other out. 
Remember, they haven't picked up the gloves for a couple of years as well. And Brad Haddon is wearing dunk shirt. They are trying to bamboozle the crowd. And uh, even the ICC officials here that are on board, they picked it up on the sideline. You're wearing the same shirt. <laughs> same number. A dot. Finish the first over. 13 runs off it. 13 without loss. Two sides for today. Number of changes within the side. Alex Doolan gets a first opportunity. Nathan Reard and up at number three. Brad Haddon did well. But we'll have to wait and see them a little bit later. They're out in the field. Chad Sayers. Known to shape the ball away from the right-hander, but just shapes it onto the middle of the bat. Smith isn't mucking around. Or just not doing the movement in the air that Sayers would like. I just think Sayers is probably not going to get that swing early on because he's still a little bit jittery in that run up, a little bit cautious, worried about slipping, looking after his body. Good shot and well fielded. I think that's Brad Hogg. Hodge, should I say? I don't know why I say Brad Hogg, because you're sitting right next to me, but Hodgie manages to get down. Which is quite funny, that, least because I was over here doing a bit of commentary back in 2010. I'd walk out of the commentary box, and this was out for Bourne Stadium. I'd be standing on the balcony. And I'd go, Hodge, Hodge, Hodge. And... When Brad was playing, they'd go hog, hog, hog. And Shivarama Christian, I was on the commentary with him, and he's going, some of the Indian pronunciations you don't get right, Hoggy. Uh, it's not that hard, even my name. I said, Shiva, you've got the whole alphabet in your name. I've only got three letters in my name. <laughs> Better length. Just pulled it back slightly. Something that probably the Australians, though, you look at Chad Sayers, known to swing the ball. This length, this length might may trouble them a little bit more, given the amount of moisture that we've seen over the last few days. They still sneak a single. Shiv's li listening. I'd uh, love to catch up one day down there in Chennai and talk leg spin again. Wonderful character. is slightly different not your stock standard third and fine leg out deep we've actually just got two fielders out deep on the leg side long on and deep square and he slashes over the offside too much width on offer perfect way to end the over 24 without loss. Great work there, Hoggy. Let's turn the job up. Brilliant job. Didn't really want it.
Nanis. Gets the ball to move away after it passes the batter. Again, that's the type of length. Power. Any whip, that's what Perkins does. Muscles it. Again, and unfortunately the skip wasn't able to stop that one. So the Australians just not getting their line and length right so far. A little lack of bounce as well. Slightly shorter, but able to get on that front foot on that shorter length. Was looking to go big, watch didn't watch, watch, quite watch. get it. Yeah, speaking to a few of the Australians, they've enjoyed coming up here. Foothills of the Himalayas, a couple of them have managed to go up to Missouri and spend a bit of time there. So it was a, a few of us as well. So much greenery. And then we even saw some of the South Africans take a eight hour trip into the hills and go fishing and stay the night. So the players are really getting an opportunity to get out and about and see India, something that I know when they were playing for their countries, their respective countries or franchises, they didn't necessarily have the time to do that. Whereas at the moment they have, and they're absolutely loving it. Wonderful people here too. Been so friendly up here in the hills. A very enjoyable time. Thanks for everyone around the area, making us feel so welcome. A little bit slower, but nicely weighted. And after a couple of dots, these West Indians, they search and, and hunt the boundaries. Just the uncertainty of the run up is just playing on the fast bowlers' minds here for Australia. And a quick single as well. Oh, better over, a couple of dots in there. Still nine runs off it, 33 without loss. Wonderful sporting complex out here in Dehradun. Hockey fields, a running track, obviously a cricket ground, and it looks like they're building an indoor centre just bottom of the screen. We just passed that. Great facilities for all of the athletes. Nathan Reardon into the attack for the first time. He'll be a handful here. Stump to stump. This is from. Match nine, or match two. Yeah, match nine. 73 of 42 deliveries. Glasses on, George. England just copped an absolute pounding from Smith. Shots all over the ground. That's got to be gone. Yeah, easy decision for the umpire right in front of the stumps. Full and straight. And Australia have been able to pick up their first wicket. Perkins just going right across the crease. Not understanding that Reardon's going to go from stump to stump. Rather than just staying on that leg st stump line and looking to hit straight, he's just caused himself a little bit of havoc. Calls that LBW. He's out for nine, 34 for one.
passing the Anirin. Comes in, 37 innings, 528 runs. 250s, strike rate could be increased a little bit. Well, a nice little gift to welcome him to the crease. Just what you want when you want to get off the mark. Just the way he stands out the crease, tapping the bat, and that back lift and the stroke. Very chandable like. It's his length right. Well, our stats man has been busy and able to uh, find out that Nathan Reardon has actually only ever picked up three T20 wickets. Known more for his batting, late power hitting. But see, even the Legends Tour, you can find another skill set. The Narayan is here because of Perkins just going across his crease. Not understanding that Reardon was going to go stump to stump. Good piece of bowling there from Reardon. With the gain, that has really been the issue for the Australians. And every time they've bowled it, it's been put away. Still a successful over, first wicket fell. 42 for one. Part of India. A little bit cooler, hasn't it, Hoggy? It's been fantastic. Beautiful weather, apart from the rain. But just a little cooler than what you get in other parts of India. The good thing about it is that it uh, saved water, not having to use the shower. I could go outside and get the soap and wash myself out there with the fresh water. Shane Watson into the attack. All-rounder for Australia. Australia were always looking for that flint-off all-rounder and Shane Watson was that right hope. Yeah, originally a Tasmanian boy then went up to Queensland. Sorry, I should say Queensland. Then he moved to Tasmania and then finally he ended up in New South Wales. One thing I remember, actually, I saw him at the uh, the National Cricket Centre. This is the last ball of the last over. Nicely played. Nicely weighted as well. Didn't try to overhit it. Yes, yeah, saw him at the National Cricket Centre back then when it was in Adelaide and he was uh, certainly in the gym a lot and always injured early on in his career and actually got to the point, I believe, Hoggy, and you, you can correct me if I'm wrong, that he was told no more lifting weights, just do, you know, body weight exercises. You bulk up really quickly and that's one of the reasons why you get injured so, so, so many times. Yeah. Just power from Smith. Any whip, he's just absolutely lapped it up. Talking about Shane Watson, you, you are right there, Lise. He was a big boy, easily put on muscle when he went to the gym. It did affect his bowling, but when he, when he came on the scene, he was bowling 140, 145 plus. And then coming in on the top order and Australia were just licking their lips. They'd found that middle order all-rounder that they wanted. But someone who could bowl 140-plus, add depth to your batting, depth to your bowling, and then the likes of Brett Lee could bowl shorter, sharper spells. It just provided good balance, but it was just a pity with all those injuries that he couldn't have that longevity with the ball. Good over. In the sense, only seven runs from it. 49 for one. Oh, that might be just jagging down leg side from J. 
Chad Sayers, starting his second over, final over of this power play. Also, big inside edge from Dwayne Smith, signalled that immediately. What a start it's been by the West Indies again, HD. Well, certainly Dwayne Smith hasn't looked as though he's um, left the game at all. 32 of 18, he's given them the start. He's not on strike. Big shot down the ground from the Honorine. He looks in good nick too, all the way. The Australians have just struggled with their length on the surface. A lot of their bowlers are swing bowlers and they like to get the ball up to the bat. And the problem is though, is that there isn't any swing on offer. That sort of length is very hittable in this form of the game. Cutter again, this time a lot fuller. Look up front of how Chad Sayers ran up, trying to swing the ball away from the right-handers. Dirk Nanners trying to swing the ball back into the right-handers. I, th I think swinging the ball away from the right-handers on these particular surfaces, subcontinent surfaces, is very, very difficult to keep batters under pressure. You know, they tend to now just free their arms. If there's a little bit of swing going away from them, there's no slip, there's no pace in the surface, no bounce. They just let their hands go, and they're prepared to risk getting an outside edge. It's just nudged around the leg side. And these West Indian openers, I know Perk is not there anymore, but they're very strong through the offside, aren't they? Any width at all to Dwayne Smith, and he climbs into you. Sometimes goes through the fielder rather than in the gap. I think the other thing, Matt, is that what is width? You know, many moons ago, width was when you had to play the ball with a horizontal bat. Now width is if it's missing off stump. Yeah, feels like the margin for error for bowlers is getting slimmer and slimmer with each year of T20 cricket. Last ball of the power play. West Indies already have a good score on the board here. And they're going to finish with 59 off the first six overs. They'll take that all day long. 59 for one, and we've had six. Four right arm seamers, sorry, three right arm seamers and one left arm seamer used so far by Australia. And now they're going to change things up with a bit of off spin. That's Brett Lee's son watching on. 15 years old, I believe. Very tall for a 15 year old. Never know. They get one or two injuries. Brett's injured at the moment. They get one or two more. He might be called upon. Chip off the old block. Wonder if he bowls a bit of seam. Yeah, yeah. Nice so two spinners in this Australian side. Bryce McGain will bowl a bit of leg spin. Jason Crazier bowl a bit of off spin. Played in the first game, haven't seen him since then. It's 29 T20 matches in his career, 30 wickets. He's got an eight for in a test match. Probably what he's best known for. Come over to my side, says Dwayne Smith. Big slog sweep right into the gap. It always intrigues us when the spinner comes on. We want to see if there's any turn in the surface, if it's going to prove to be problematic for the batters. Well, we're having a look. Dwayne Smith doesn't need to have a second look. Top scorer in the competition now, Dwayne Smith. 
hunting down his third half century. That was close though, bit of turn. Coming around the wicket, it can be go across the right-hander and then just to straighten it, brings the LBW into the equation when the off-spinner bowls around the wicket. It's come off the toe end, I think it's gonna go away for another boundary for Smith. He's into the 40s now. Well, this is the trouble, isn't it? When you've disappeared over mid-wicket, you are so hesitant to land the ball in and around off stump in the fear that you disappear over the leg side boundary. And so width is provided. Yes, it's a toe end that's gone for four, but there still was width. And width again. I thought for one moment that might be a chance, but that has gone flat and hard. He didn't have far to move. Chad Say is down at long off. But he was hit so powerfully, it didn't matter. He's just able to free his arms. And Kreish is better off trying to bowl the ball in and around middle and leg stump, trying to get Smith off strike. Got to have a delivery that gets the danger man off strike. Now they run the first hard, but they're going to settle for that. That's a good over for the West Indies. Crazier's first goes for 16, 75 for one. Simply stunning view that in the foothills of the Himalayas. Beautiful when those cloud, cl clouds even roll in over the top of those mountains. We've seen a few too many of them perhaps. Bryce McGain, spin from both ends, bit of leg spin. There's been some turn. Bryce McGain, another one of many Australians who had to follow the late great Shane Warne when he ent ended his career, and it was there was such difficult shoes to fill, impossible really to fill, and the weight of expectation, the weight of expectation on uh, on all those spinners was just it just proved too much. Fifty for Dwayne Smith. Third 50 in the competition. He is in supreme form at the moment. Looks like he could still play at the highest level. Just 26 balls he's faced. Six fours and two sixes. Ooh, that skidded on. Not too far away from the off stump. Maybe not quite short enough to cut that. Yeah, that was very full. Yeah, on the front foot there, comes down. Okay. Picks out the man at cow corner. So good over by McGain, that goes for just four, 79 for one.
Windy's going along at almost 10 and over. Oh, big ball bunger. That might be a no ball on height, that, I would suggest. I think in this form, not this form of the game, but in this age level, I think the benefit of the doubt should go to the to the bowler. Because if you bowl that sort of full toss at that sort of pace, there's a lot of players who would hit it out the ground. Don't want to bowl that length to Dwayne Smith. That has gone gun barrel straight, not right out the screws, but. It's still gone a long way. Well, where do you bowl? Just a little bit full, but it's only a touch. And you pay the ultimate price. He's just so effortless as well, isn't he, Dwayne Smith? He's a big, powerful guy, but he doesn't swing in a powerful manner. It's all about timing. And there we go again, this time over the offside. That's an even better shot. And that's gone for six, two. Over cover. He hasn't middled this. He hasn't middled this at all. Watson tries to take a little bit of pace off it, just a touch, by rolling his fingers across the ball. But again, it's just a free swing of the arms. I'd hate to know what would happen if he did middle it. He does that well as well, doesn't he? Follows up at a six or a boundary with a single. He's not trying to bash everything. What a tournament he's having. 51 against Bangladesh for 42 balls, 73 or 42 against England. And now another half century. We started with that first ball deposited Dirk Nanez over his head for six, and then it was all about through the offside for him. Six fours and four sixes. He's not trying to overhit at all. It's been a real clinic of opening batting in T20. And no real attempt to sort of get a feel for the surface. The first delivery that Nanez ran up and pitched up went back over his head. Well, I feel if maybe this was a few years ago and some of these Aussie fast bowlers were in their prime, you might have seen a few short balls to him just to test him out. But fortunately now it's a big ask for <laughs> these weary limbs and 40 plus year olds to bowl the, the bouncer. I was having a chat with one of the uh, West Indians, Darren Powell, before the first ball was bowled and he said that he got shouted at by Brian Lara in the previous encounter for bowling a bouncer. And Laura's not playing tonight, so maybe he can bowl another one. End of the ninth, 96 for one. And it's that time again. We will be taking a short break. It's time for a Seat Thai strategic timeout. I have with me Brett Lee. Brett, look at the atmosphere here. Yeah, this is wonderful, isn't it? I'm sure you've enjoyed your stint in this tournament. Yeah, look, it's always a great uh, pleasure to come over to India and to see the atmosphere, the crowd, once again, are uh, electric. Uh, been a bit disheartening because of the rain, mm -hmm. but uh, it's out of everyone's control. But most importantly, we're playing some good cricket today and hopefully the crowd are enjoying it. I'm finding it quite unusual, you sitting in the dugout. What is, what's <laughs> happening, Brett? No, nah, look, I'll be right for next game. Um, <laughs> okay. Died for a ball last game and caught my thigh, but uh, oh, yeah, had a, had a session today oh, and felt good. pretty good. So I uh, was really close for today, but just want to make sure I'm ready for Tuesday. I could see in the previous game that magic is still flowing, upright, seam position, ball is swinging even now, so well done for nah, that. Well, the ball's shaping. It might be shaping <laughs> at 160 k's anymore, but um, I still feel like I could play a role and play a part. But most importantly, as I mentioned, it's great to be back out in the field again and playing against the legends um, that are on show here today, but also who we've also come yeah, up against. Good. How's the side looking now? Are they all fit? What is, what's, what's the position of the rest of the players in the squad? Yeah, look, everyone's in a really, really good spot at the moment. Um, obviously very, very well led by the great Shane Watson, so he's leading from the front. We've still got a few guys on the bench that are uh, fit and firing and ready to go, so uh, just got to make sure that we give ourselves every opportunity. This ground in particular here, I think a, a 200 and probably 10 is a pass score. So hopefully we'll be able to chase them down. 
I see that your son is here. Is he following your shoes? Um, in, in your shoes, uh, Brett? Well, he's uh, he's a batting all rounder. Actually, ah, he's been great. training with the team. Um, he's you know almost 16 years of age and loves it. It's his fifth time here. So Preston has certainly enjoyed Ow! being uh, part of the team. And yeah, he's been been batting against the fast balls and that's so it's been a lot of fun for him. Is he fit now? Can he get into the 11? Oh, if we lose a few more, he, <laughs> he might have to get a, a you know a Guernsey. So definitely. <laughs> But uh, Brett, you know, this is a wonderful opportunity, one for all of you to get together and also for such an important cause that is road safety here. Yeah, and look, it's, it's a really important message that, uh, you know, we hit at home to, um, the, the, you know, the kids on the streets and certainly, the, you know, the adults who are driving. If you're going to be in a car, wear a seatbelt, make sure that the kids are all strapped in, make sure when you're on a motorbike, well, you know, wear a helmet. Just keep things really, really safe, really basic. Um, we all want to have fun in this environment, but make sure that, you know, you look after yourself. Thanks a lot for chatting with us. We'll go back to the comm box. Thank you, Saba. And Brett, clearly a good luck charm there because the West Indies have got their second and it's a big one. Dwayne Smith completely toe-ending that shot. Brad Hodge taking a simple catch. Well, he made it look simple. He just trotted in from the boundary and said, I'll have that. And McGain, who's been the pick of the bowlers by some distance, has the big one. Smith goes for a brilliant 65, the West Indies 98 for two. Captain Kirk's in. Oh. And he almost gets off the mark, but is sent back first up. So we're halfway through the innings. The West Indies are 98 for two. Beautiful piece of bowling from Krasia. Extracting some turn a little slower. It's providing a bit of an extra bounce as well. The overspin, the seam position going to the 45 region. Bald. Talk about right arm off spin. Lisa, what did you think of that last delivery? Licking my lips. Absolutely loved it. Probably nice that the spinners are on and, and we're on as well to talk about it. There is something in the pitch at the moment. So it'll be important every time Australia pick up a wicket that they make the new batter, the skipper, Kirk Edwards, struggle for his runs. That's how they can keep the score down and allow their batters to chase it down. Good piece of bowling from Krasia. Around the wicket to the right-hander. Bryce McGain, just that extra turn. Ball holding up. Smith couldn't get the timing. That's the wicket they needed. Otherwise, it was going to be a big onslaught from Smith. Oh! One, one thing that's certainly different from Australian spinners to maybe subcontinent spinners is the use of flight. Because in Australia, you don't often get a lot of assistance from the pitch, as in you don't get spin off the pitch. So you've got to beat him in the air. And right now, Krasia's doing that. He's tossing the ball up. But it's a fortuitous boundary for Edwards because he gets off the mark. 
Crozier coming around the wicket and not trying to turn the ball. This bowl, some arm balls to the right-hander. He's not playing for that particular type of delivery. He's playing for the ball to spin in. That's why he's played and missed a couple of times and got that outside edge. Slog sweep this time. And he fielders out on the leg side to protect that. Good over for the Australians. Only the six runs off at 104 for two. Watson just putting a slip in place. Oh. Given the amount of turn that Bryce McGain has been able to extract. Glad to see they're being a little bit more aggressive. It's been just slowing things down in the back end of this first innings. Well, flight it up, and it was an invitation. Dionyron absolutely accepted it. This is where you've got to think as a spinner, and you just try and get the batsman off strike where you're bowling the ball into the batsman so he can have that easy swing. Hitting with the turn. The length there also helped the batsman. Again, has got a wrong, and this is the time to bowl it. Oh, a lot flatter, which is uh, certainly expected after you get whacked for six straight back over your head. Back spinner. Sometimes on these tacky surfaces, the back spinner, which is aim to go straight, sometimes grips and turns. A chance? No. Brad Hodge just trotting out around the boundary. Just picks it up with the one hand. If the field was in a healthier position, Brad Hodge would have gone a lot quicker and probably taken that quite easily. But because there's a lot of bogginess out there, Players are just looking after their bodies in the field. Yeah, and that's a beautiful piece of bowling by McGain. It's the quicker one. The back spinner again just slides on. And the left-handed batsman has to depart. Yeah, leg spinners. They're so important in the shortened format. Flat. Not a lot of turn. That's not what he was looking for. He'd already been hit for a six that over. He fights back. Theo Narayan goes for 28 off 25. West Indies legends, 113 for three. Hyatt, the new batter, coming up against a bowler who's clever with his skills. Bryce McGain, two for 15. It's 114 for three.
Oh, Song River, just the branch of it. So many little waterfalls we saw as well as a few of us headed up into the hills, for, into Missouri. Beautiful part of the world. Crazier to continue. Catch it, what? Oh, and it was Watson in that mid-wicket area where it was a little bit aerial. But Hyatt has the power. Frazier, just a little slower on this delivery. Just trying to get a little bit of turn because of the new batsman out the crease. But Hyatt just equally good enough to take it on and get Bally for shot. Yeah. Heights here because of the all of the luck wicket before Bryce McCain. Just the back spinner. See how it skids on, hurries on, and keeps low. Yeah, again, it's just the, the flight and the length which is allowing Kirk Edwards just to step and hit. The previous over. Edwards was looking to go more mid-off cover region. And because the ball was going straight on, not turning, he was missing it. Now he's had a different approach. Next time he's got an opportunity against Crazier and looking for that straight boundary. All of a sudden he's in a better position to hit that arm ball. A slight change in the field now. Extra fielder on the offside. Two behind point. Oh, how is that? Just uh, a polite inquiry by Ben Dunk. And they will go up and have a, a quick look. I think you're good though, man. Thank you. Thank you, man. Have you never known? That's good for the advertiser. Well, this is high. Who wants it? Nobody wants it. <laughs> and it's plugged. Might need a new ball. <laughs> 126 for three. Keep looking at these shots, can't we? Beautiful scenery. Where there's been good so far, which is really good to see. Not quite sure what those two were doing. One thing is for sure. One thing for sure is I'm glad to see that Dirk Nanis has got a little bit longer pants. Last time I saw him, they were up into his calves. Such a tall man. <laughs> well, they might have been talking about winter sports. And the Caribbean crew have been in the bobsled. But that's Jamaica. Edwards is from Barbados. Dirk Nannis, the skier. They could have been having that discussion. Could have. 
but the, it was the bees that was uh, that got them down to the ground nice and low. That's happened a number of times on a cricket field. Nicely driven. But protection there as well. So Reedon bowling so far to his field. Five fielders out, all out in front. And third and fine leg up inside the circle. Cutter as well now. He's showing all the tricks. He's just flying over a good length. Ryan's hopefully, or hoping that they drop the honey on that good length. Bit of gold. Get some wickets. Get back into this contest. They've really been able to kind of peg back the West Indies legends. And if they continue, the West Indies at this current run rate, which is just under 10, they'll get to that 180 mark. It's good bowling from Reed in here. Not a frontline bowler, but just bowling the cutter, then the quicker one, the normal stock delivery, and just that change of pace both in the air and off the wicket is just causing the West Indies batsman a bit of a headache to just get that little bit of consistency in their swing. Well, and over that consisted of one single, one dot, should I say, and five singles, 131 for three. Credit to the ground staff. They've been working tirelessly to ensure that we get some cricket, especially today with the fact that the, the sun was shining as well. You can see a lot of sawdust has been put on the ground. Chad Sayers back into the attack. Nice, Chaddy. Seeing one of the umpires that are not officiating this game will be officiating the next game, talking to the head curator. And it seems like a very concentrated conversation. The umpire was eager to get in the curator's ear. I'm just trying to figure out what it's all about. Good length. Good length and bowling to the field. That's what the Australians have been able to do. When you think of what they did in the power play and probably within the first 10 overs, there was plenty of width on offer. And Smith, Perkins, Theo and Ryan really did capitalise on that. And you'll see through this package that Wayne Smith was really able to capitalise it. When they went full, he loves to go straight down the ground. Such a strong player. We've seen him do this so many times. The West Indies and so many T20 domestic leagues. And clever bit of bowling by Bryce McGain. Awesome, Chad. Chad Say is going to the cutting option as well. Rolling the fingers over the ball. And again, just slowing it up, getting a little bit of turn. And Smith wasn't able to find the timing. He looked to go straight. Because of that turn, it caused him to hit it wide of deep mid-off. Well stopped. 
this toe end of the bat, so it didn't necessarily fly down to that third region. The crowd appreciating. Again. It's doing enough to cut that down to one. moves and I think the umpire is not going to listen to Chad Sayers and call a white a little unlucky here in the field smart by the Australians again another good over five overs left it's 138 for three Five overs to go. What kind of a score can the West Indies legends get to here? Well, I'd imagine they're eyeing up something maybe in the 190s, as close to 200 as they can get. Hard to know what a good score is on this pitch. We've only had one game here so far, and that was a 15 over a side match between India and England. India made 170. That's hit hard and straight for four. So is this the start of an acceleration in these final five overs? As soon as batters don't have to leave their ground where they can just stand, plant that front foot and swing. As a spinner, you know you've got your length wrong. Oh, he's hit that hard though. He really has. There's a long off there. Didn't move. Swung away again. Oh, and a bit of a bubble means they'll come back for two, but Gracia does just enough to prevent the force. Not easy out there, to be fair, out in the outfield. We've had a lot of rain. It's a boggy outfield. And let's understand it with all the rain around as well. The curator probably wouldn't have been able to get a lawnmower on it. Yeah, what? Uh, it's going to be bumpy. You were talking about a, a score and Know, what is a good score? I mean, interesting listening to Brett Lee talk a little bit earlier. Pa is 200. Pa. Oh, the game's changed. <laughs> well, it is in Pakistan at the moment, isn't it? That series between England and Pakistan. Bob oh, McGain. He's been the pick of the bowlers by far, hasn't he? Look at those figures. Two for 23. One ball remaining. So if they go at 11 and over from here, they'll get up to 192, 13 and over to get up to Brett Lee's par. Got you. Room higher. Will this carry? Yes, straight to the man. Well taken by Callum Ferguson. The Aussie way, that was hit hard, but he couldn't have picked him out any better. As this leaves the bat, Ferguson drops down onto a knee and gets himself into a catching position out that didn't look like being dropped did it safe as you like so the west indies have lost another one they've just stalled ever so slightly in the latter stages of this innings it goes for 12. the windies 146 for four and it's about at this time where the signal will be made and we will have a strategic timeout
Four overs to go then. The West Indies, having won the toss, are in a good position despite just losing Danza Hyatt for 12. And that's largely because, again, Dwayne Smith got them off to a flyer. 65 or 33, his third half century in a row. Good support from Dion Ryan and his captain, Kirk Edwards, who's still at the crease on 27 off 20. They can get 50 off the last four overs. I'm sure they'll be pretty happy with about 196, something around that mark. As far as the bowling is concerned, one standout, Bryce McGain, four overs, 10 dots, three for 23. Magnificent stuff in the face of some pretty aggressive batting. The seamers on the whole haven't been too successful, apart from Nathan Reard, and that is the pace off from him. Two overs, one for 14. So, Dwayne, you're in prime form. Seriously, tell me, have you really retired from international cricket? Yes, I have. Um, <laughs> I'm still playing club cricket at home, so I try to keep myself as fit as possible. Uh, I know that these tournaments are coming up, so I'm trying to stay as fit as I can for them. And most of the games you have provided your side with such a splendid start. So how is it going for you now? Your team is, um, is in good position even now. Um, I just think we need to, to keep going. Um, I think if you could get about 180 here, I'm sure it would be a good challenge in total. Um, the wicket looked tacky um, when the game started. Uh, was it a conscious decision by your, by your team to bat first? Yeah, I think we decided to bat first um, and it was a, a good first ball too. <laughs> so I didn't mind, but um, it's, it's just for us to go up there and try and bat and get the runs on the board and try and defend them. Um, you've had past experience of playing in India, so all that must be coming in very handy for you even now. Yeah, it does. Um, I had like 10 years or so in the IPL, so, and also traveling with West Indies. But um, it's always good to know and have the, 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 um, the knowledge and to pass on to the other guys too. And it's good to see that the other guys are trying to score as fast as they can as well. And different conditions, you played in Kanpur, played in Indore and now um, in, in Dehradun. So this is uh, it's, it's good to travel all over the country and experience um, different culture as well as um, the kind of support all of you have received from the crowd. Yeah, it's always been good coming to India. Um, the crowds are lovely. I mean, they support cricket yeah. tr throughout. And, and it's good to see that they have tournaments like these for guys that are finished. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that is the best part. And also, um, um, the reason why all of, you are, all of you are here is because for road safety. And I think that is such a wonderful uh, cause. And yes, it is. Um, it's good to see that the guys are really showing the initiative to and, and supporting the road safety. Um, any injury worries in your side now, or doing, or all of them are fit? No, I think only um, Brian was a little bit, but um, I think all the guys are ready. So whenever, whenever call upon, they're ready to play. So your team is very good form. Let's go back to a live action. Thank you so much for chatting with us, doing. No problem. Thank you. And that man's in good form too. That was a humongous blow we just saw from the skipper. Biggest of the day, without doubt. Well bowled. Well bowled, Nathan Reardon. 4 6 and then pace off. He looks like a strong super middleweight or light heavyweight. Oh, what's happened there? He went for a little run. Stick to bashing it out of the ground, Kirk. 158 for four. Still got smiles on their faces. Our cheerleaders doing a sterling job right from the start of this tournament. Not the biggest crowd today, but it's building in anticipation of the big one after this. Remember, it's a double header, Super Sunday. India taking on Bangladesh. It will be rocking in here later. 
quite a few more people will be through those doors. Here's Dirk Nannis. Yeah, we know what they turn up to see, not only India, but the great man himself, Sachin Tendulkar. And then just listening to uh, Dwayne Smith a little bit earlier. This is the wicket. Good catch, Callum Ferguson in the deep. Just got into a real strong position. Just listening to Dwayne Smith a little bit earlier, Matt. I'm, I'm being a bit of a fan here, but if Lara doesn't play the next game, I'm going to spit my dummy because that's why I came. I want to see Tendulkar and Lara. I want to see these guys play. Well, I'm pretty sure Sachin's going to play later on this evening. He's in good form. Unfortunately, it was a bit gutting to miss out on Sachin v Lara, wasn't it? That was rained out in Kanpur. But you will get to see the little master later. He looked in sublime nick in the previous game against England. 40 off 20 he made. Runs all around the park. And India taking on Bangladesh, who at the moment are bottom of the table, looking for their first win. Another one who's in good nick is Namanojo, who's doing his very best impression of Phineas Fogg by disappearing from one part of India to the next. Hopefully he's uh, he's here tonight because he's been playing well as well. Now he tried to hit that one into Delhi, I think. It was well bowled by Dirk Nanis, just pushed it across him, stayed away from his arc. prefer him trying this Edwards rather than the dainty little sweeps or reverse sweeps stand dead still and try and clear the boundary up and over the offside bit of a thick outside edge and they'll come back for two so Kirk Edwards keeps the strike showing some skill yet Dirk Nanners with his cutters going across the right-hander. I think ordinarily this should have just been one, but again, highlighting that the fielders are just taking it a little bit easier and the fear that they do some damage in this boggy outfield. Here's Chad Sayers. It's been a good comeback by Australia the last two or three overs. Maybe in the back of the minds of these two West Indian batsmen, there's not a whole load to come after this. Pretty much the bowlers after this. It's quite a long tail, so Dave Mohammed and Kirk Edwards may feel they've got to bat these last 11 balls. Again by Sayers, this time around. First to go, William Perkins. That was as plumb as plumb can be. Got a long way across. The big one after a fantastic knock. 65, Dwayne Smith toe-ending that delivery yeah, of Bryce McGain, who picked up the third wicket to go as well. The honorine bold when he misjudged the length. Come back for two here. Well run, good throw. Bullet arm right over the top of the stumps. They're going to go upstairs just to check, as they have done a few times in this tournament, the umpires. Again, it's the pace to the ball, which wasn't speedy or anything, but lovely arm. Right, that's it. We can move on. The one thing that Sayers wants to do is keep out of the reach of Edwards. Doesn't want to bowl at the stumps, wants to be wide of them. Hit straight, but not hard enough to get to the boundary. So 12 balls now since the last four. Let's just finish off those wickets for you. The final one, fourth wicket, Danza Hyatt. Picked out Callum Ferguson on the boundary. Absolutely perfectly, right down his throat. McGain has been impressive 
control of line and length. Buried his, his line when he's had to as well. This is really good stuff from Chad Sayers. Five off the first five balls of the penultimate over. Pace off again. Right, now what does Sayers do? Does he try and actually just give a single here and keep Muhammad on strike? Or get Muhammad on strike for the final over? Stay away from Edwards, who's 46 of 32. That might be the boundary they've been looking for. Just plugged a little bit, but had enough to get to the line. Bit of luck for Mohammed there, but he'll take it. Sayers is done, none for 36. We've got one over to go, it's one seven three for four. Doug Nanez to bowl the final over of the innings. And he bowls Kirk Edwards. Big swing across the line. He misses, Nanez hits. He's just struggled with the ball that's going across him here. In the previous overs, Sayers bowled the ball wide of off stump, out of the big reach of Edwards. And this one, Nana's going across. Big swing, big miss, but a valuable innings from Edwards, the captain. He goes for 46. Wendy's 173 for five. Jerome Taylor coming in at number seven. And immediately heaves this to the leg side, up and over. No, it wasn't. Brilliant fielding on the cow quarter boundary. Jason Crazier. That wasn't a man in his 40s. That was a man in his 20s. They'll have a look at this. They'll have a look at this. Taylor thinks that he's hit a big one first ball. Crazier gets himself into a great position. Jumps. Oh, just don't. We don't need a look. Just give it to him. Just give it to him. Effort. Yeah, that's it. Move on. Brilliantly done. Should get player of the match for that, as far as I'm concerned. Bold. Second time in the over. Off stump, flattened. Great death bowling from Dirk Nanez. Australia have really come back into this innings. They have, at one stage, they were staring at 200. They really were staring a chasing 200, but they bowled beautifully towards the back end. Ever since the dismissal of Smith, they've scrapped back. This time it's Taylor. He goes for two. 175 for six. Krishma Santoki, the new batsman for the Windies. Right into his work. And he wants to come back for two, which he will make comfortably. Edwards was the first. Big swing and a miss, and virtually the identical delivery and stroke. Oh, I thought that was a chance for a third in the over there, caught and bowled. For a moment, Nanez's eyes lit up. You can see the funny side, though. It just died on him, didn't it? He thought this was coming back at him like a rocket, but it's hit high up on the bat, and it's, oh, it's not there. He nearly did a knee. <laughs> Great to see the smiles on faces, doesn't it, when moments like that occur. Last ball of the innings. Perfect Yorker, which Santoki does well to dig out in the end just for a single, but it's a, a fantastic final over from Dirk Nanez. Two wickets and five runs conceded. So he finishes with two for 32 off his four overs, really pulls things back. And Australia and that man, the captain Shane Watson, I'm sure will be pretty happy with the way that they've finished. They've got to win their final two games, this one and against England, to have any chance of going through to the semi-finals. And they've given themselves an opportunity here. Yeah, well, this will take some chasing. Anything over that 160 mark is difficult. We know the outfield is not a quick, a quick one, so finding fours is difficult but you can certainly clear the boundary for sixes at this sort of altitude. Smith was magnificent, 65 of just 33 deliveries. Hard to believe that he is a retired international. He was well supported by his captain, Edwards, 46 of 33. 
it was a tale of two halves really the first one belonging to the West Indies the second to the Australian bowlers Dirk Nannis' last two overs went for just 11. He was expensive in his first two. Picked up two important wickets right at the end as well. Chad Sayers' final over was decent too. He also went for 36. But it was uh, Bryce McGain, leg spinner at the bottom, who was hands down the bowler of the innings. Three for 23 for him. Economy rate, 5.75. He's with Saba. True splendid effort on a wicket like this to pitch the ball in the right areas. Wonderful effort from you. Thank you so much. It's been a terrific support with the crowd. An amazing job by the curators and the ground staff to get the ground up. There's been a lot of rain and we're very privileged to be out there. Against such a powerful um, you know, batting side, you had some plans in mind before you came on to bowl? Well, it's probably just hit the right length and <laughs> hope for the best. Uh, it's a very, very powerful West Indies batting team and a small ground. so. You had to keep your nerve, and uh, I was very pleased with the four overs. What do you think about the surface? The surface has played really well. It probably does favour the spin a little bit. There is some spin there, so I'm sure the West Indies spinners will be pleased to see that. And the outfield, as I said, credit to the curators and the ground staff. It's amazing. And what about the target, Bruce? You think your team is capable of uh, overhauling this one? Well, we've got some firepower at the top. None better than our captain, Shane Watson, and he's in top form. So I'd like to back us in. Uh, previous game was exciting encounter in the end, especially with Brad Haddon coming in, scoring those wonderful runs. So you do have a lot of batting um, to bolster your uh, batting depth also. Yeah, they're all very capable, and I'm looking forward to seeing them put on a show this afternoon. Thank you so much, Bruce. Very welcome. It's conceded, so Australia will take that from where they were, but they're going to have to bat really well here if they're going to stay in the competition, have a chance for the semi-finals. Stay with us. The run chase on the way.